Hey guys, what's up? Shane Wolf 38 here. Now, I haven't made a video for about a month, which is a pretty long time. Uh, back around then is actually when I started school, and for about a week, you know, I was kind of getting readjusted. But after that, I really didn't have any new ideas, and I didn't really want to make a video, you know, if I didn't have uh, an idea that I was happy with. And I did have some concepts I wanted to show off that I had already made, but I never really got around to doing that, you know. Um, or I wanted to do it well, you know, make a video, a good video on it, and it, yeah, I kind of got lazy, so <laughs> sorry about that. But I do have a pretty cool concept today, so let's just get right into it. So what you have here is you have a grid. Now, what this is going to do, so it's going to spread you to a random location on this uh, this grid. And you may be saying, well, Shane, that's pretty stupid because there's a command called spread players. It should only take one command. Yes, you're right, but there's one problem with spread players, and that is if you want to, let's say, take out all these um, stone, all these andesite blocks, then you actually have to remove all blocks from the level of y equals 0 to y equals, I think it's 255, whatever the max height is. So you cannot have anything there, but with this, you can actually have any blocks you want there. So as you can see, I'm clicking this to randomize my location and it's only spreading me onto the grass. I'm not being spread onto any of the stone brick, or not stone brick, sorry about that, I'm obsessed with stone brick, uh, stone six, or andesite, polished andesite. So I'm just kind of randomizing my location, and as you can see, I'm getting nowhere on the andesite, which is just awesome. I mean, because you can restrict any location, and because of that, you could have, you know, any spawns for maps, or any spawn for a map, and uh, restrict certain locations, which I think is pretty dang helpful. And as you can see, there's actually not that many commands. It goes pretty darn quickly. And yeah, I think that's that's awesome. Um, so it uses some some tricks. Let me show you. Actually, it's pretty easy to adjust which blocks you don't want. All you need to do is change the grid down here, and basically wherever there's bedrock, it's restricted, and wherever there's um, uh, stone too, what's that called? Polished granite. There is a block that's available, and you can just add anything or remove anything there, and everything will be changed up here. So that's pretty cool. Um, it uses some tricks with binary, and it basically, is, uh, if it goes along here, it tests if there's... Yeah, okay, this is pretty... Yeah, I see. I am not going to be able to explain this well, but uh, let me try to think of a good way. So basically, it tests the first 16 blocks, and if there's a number, so first it determines the uh, number of available blocks. So let's say there's three blocks, and then it chooses a random number from one to three. So let's just say two. It tests if the first in the first 16 blocks, if there's if there's less than two blocks then it's going to move it forward and subtract that from the number. So let's say it's two, and let's say there's just one block here. Let's just pretend that one of these blocks is over here. It's going to remove that, and then you're going to have one. And then since you had three in total, and one was already removed, you have two blocks here. And since you chose number two, you're going to the second one available. So that's the first of these two. And then it just kind of repeats that until it finds that block. Okay, that was a pretty bad explanation. If you got some of it, then looking at the commands you'll probably get the rest but I do have one more thing to show in this video and that's this uh, applied in a 3D zone because uh, 2D is great but when you have 3D it opens up a lot of possibilities so let's just hop right in there okay so here we are in the 3D version and before I get into this I'm gonna mention that this is actually quite a bit more laggy than the 2D version and that's not because it's in 3D uh, it has because if you were to convert this into 2D right now, it would still be just as laggy. And the reason for this is because instead of the uh, storage being underground at bedrock where there's really no rendering involved, if since it's up here and next to you, it has to render that all on your screen, and that ca ah, that causes quite a bit of lag and delay. But that can be fixed by moving it to the bottom. The only reason I put it to the side is, in theory, if you wanted this to be from bedrock to height limit, you'd have to have it to the side of it. Because if you had it under it, obviously you could only do half of the height limit. Because, yeah, it's kind of obvious. Um, 
But anyway, so 3D gives you a lot of applications. You could have something like this and have a multiple layered spawning zone and then it would spawn randomly on one of those layers. And you could obviously, you know, if you wanted to break blocks right here and prevent them from going right here, but they would be able to go right here, you could easily do that. And it opens up a lot of possibilities. If you had like a complex cave system with multiple layers, you can make it so they could only spawn in some of those parts. And uh, I'm restricting them from spawning right here on these spikes. So let's just click it. You can see that it, it is definitely delayed. Um, it takes about <laughs> two seconds after I spawn here. But um, that's okay, you know. But I still really like the look of it. <laughs> you can kind of see those logs falling. Um, so yeah. Let me see if I can get on top of this. Oh, so yeah, you can see right here I got on the second layer. Pretty cool. Um, I got on the bottom, sort of the bottom layer. And let me see if I can get on this mountain. I'm trying to get on the mountain, but <laughs> there's a lot of spots available. So, uh, come on, put me on the mountain. <laughs> I keep kidding. Uh, oh my goodness. All right, well, perhaps I'm just an unlucky person. Because I am... Oh, I got on the mountain and I clicked... Dang it. Oh, but I'm on, I'm on the top layer now, so... Yay. Uh, come on. Yeah, this is... Wow, okay. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just stop trying to do that. But anyway, you get the gist. Uh, when it's in a 3D environment, it's a lot more helpful. And there's not that many more commands involved. I mean, that, that does look like a lot of command blocks. But it does open up a lot of possibilities because with spread players, even if you did want to, um, if you were willing to remove uh, from 0 to 255 for a 2D environment, once you get to a 3D environment, you can no longer do that because you have no control over the height that it would spawn at. Um, so like if I were to remove, for instance, this layer, then you would have, you know, obviously a lot more, a lot more options here. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's about it for the video. There will be a download link in the description to both of the worlds because it is two separate worlds. And uh, thank you to Unaware. I will leave his uh, channel link in the description just for kind of inspiring this idea. He mentioned something in a chat I was in about you know how to restrict uh, spread players so it wouldn't go to certain blocks. And you know, I've heard that before, but I don't know why. It just kind of sparked this idea, and I was like, hmm. You know what? I'm going to try to do that without spread players. And I think it turned out pretty well. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry for the, uh, the break. And, yeah. See you guys later. Bye.